All right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2022 Kia Seltos Nightfall Edition. Up front is a 1.6 liter turbocharged inline four and down below is a seven speed dual clutch automatic transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this here Seltos for two main reasons. First of all, I reviewed a Seltos back when they first hit the streets, but the issue with that is that that was a base model. That was just a taste of what the Seltos could be. And so this being a nightfall, I have some perks over that other vehicle. But the second reason is just that. This is the nightfall edition. It gets a couple extra added bits, and I'm excited to share those with you today. But before we get on with the rest of the video, if you are looking to help out the channel, there are some awesome links in the description below. One is for cash for cars, if you're looking to sell your vehicle, get a quote, help the channel. We also have the fixed OBD2 Bluetooth sensor to help diagnose your car, buy one, help the channel. And we have con plates, if you don't wanna drill holes in your front bumper, but still need to display your license plate, you can suction cup it to your windshield, and when you buy one, you help out the channel. Thank you to all the sponsors of this video, but let's get on with it. But before we get back Back to the engine, let's talk about what comes in the Nightfall package. Now the Nightfall is basically the mid-tier package. You have the LX and S down towards the bottom, and then you have like the SX and stuff, which is actually nicer than the Nightfall. So the Nightfall is actually in the mid-range. But according to the window sticker itself, this is what comes in the Nightfall Edition. It comes with the 1.6 liter turbo four cylinder, which we'll talk about in a second. It comes with the seven speed dual clutch automatic. Again, we'll talk about later. It comes with blind spot collision avoidance assist at the rear, rear cross traffic collision avoidance assist, 18 inch matte black alloy wheels, high utility black roof rails, and black finish on the radiator grill. So it gets all of that as well as everything that comes in the S package. So you get a couple nicer features and it's really more of an aesthetic look to it. It's really been interesting watching a lot of these auto manufacturers sort of create a mid tier or mid trim level brand almost. Like Mazda just brought out the carbon edition for the CX-5 and the Mazda 6 and hopefully It'll come to the Mazda 3 one day. And then there's the Nightshade Edition from Toyota, which is again a mid-tier trim level that sort of blacks everything out, makes it look nice. And now Kia has the Nightfall Edition. You can get the Telluride in the Nightfall Edition as well. So it's sort of interesting seeing these brands do this. And I don't know if this is going to be a fad. I don't know if this is going to stick. But for the 2020s, it seems to be what everyone's doing. So let's get back to that 1.6 liter turbocharged inline four under the hood. It puts out 175 horsepower and 195 foot pounds of torque. So it's no slouch at all. And so along with that, you actually get some pretty decent fuel economy combined is 27, 25 city, 30 on the highway, which actually is pretty decent. And the owner has gotten a little bit more than that. That is because the turbo spools a little bit higher. So when you're cruising, you're not actually using the extra power of the turbocharger. You're just sitting using just the tiny little four cylinder. But then when you need that passing power, when you need to get on an on-ramp or get around someone in traffic, you have that turbo to help you out. Let's uh, see here, I guess. Not bad. It's not, you know, a Ferrari, but it definitely gets up and out of its own way. It is peppy enough for what it is. I mean, you have to remember, this is not built for Route 66 Dragway. You don't take this out on Autobahn Country Club South. This is for getting around town, being an adult, doing adult things. And so in that respect, I can't really ask for more power. It's very adequate in the areas where it's important. Like I said, Paraduit is a seven speed dual clutch automatic transmission. Now, the reason I put emphasis on dual clutch is because it's kind of weird for a car like this to get a dual clutch. Dual clutch transmissions are built for performance. They have two clutches inside of them, meaning that the next gear is already engaged, making shifts lightning quick. I mean, this car shifts very, very quickly. Why a compact SUV needs to shift lightning quick, I don't know. However, it does it here. One slight downside with the dual clutch is that it's a little bit clunky at slow speeds, inching in traffic, it's a little clunky, but you're really not gonna notice it too much. Last but not least, this here Nightfall Seltos is all wheel drive. 
part of the Nightfall package. However, you can still find front wheel drive base model Seltos if that's what you really want or if you end up getting a base model, just know that it's probably going to be front wheel drive, which is just a preference. So with that out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have two physical gauges. On the left is my tachometer with coolant temperature down at the bottom. And on the right is my speedometer and fuel. And then I get a little screen in the center. It is a customizable screen. However, this is very, 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 very typical of Kias. Pretty much every Kia gets this same sort of screen at the base level. And it has good information, but you know, it's only one color. It's, everything is white and there's nothing that really pops out. However, it is nice that you get a lot of information. On the steering wheel on the left, I have my voice commands, mode, volume, skip track, and phone options. And on the right, I have my pages setting for that center screen and the gauges we just talked about, my cruise control, and my steering assist. Now, one thing I would have liked to have seen in the Nightfall Edition is radar cruise control. Unfortunately, the Nightfall being a mid-tier trim level, it still does not come with the radar cruise which I think is a big misstep from Kia because a lot of other manufacturers give radar crews at lower trims. My base model Mazda 3 has radar crews, the base model Honda Civic has radar crews, and those are priced pretty similarly to this vehicle. So I wish that it came with that feature. I use that feature all the time. I love my radar crews. I will not trade it for the world. And so I wish that this car had it. To round out the steering wheel, I do have the updated Kia badge in the center. Say what you want about it, I'm still kind of torn myself. But the steering wheel itself is leather wrapped and it feels nice in my hands. It doesn't feel base model -y, which is very, very nice. To the left of me, I have my gauge dimmer switch, my automatic start stop on and off, lane keep assist and traction control. And then on the door, I just have my power mirrors, power locks and power windows, very standard there. However, I do want to talk about the speaker for a second. The sound system in the stock Seltos non-upgraded is actually pretty decent. I drove around with my friend last night and honestly, it, it sounded good. I actually complimented the sound system, which is saying a lot for the non-upgraded system. However, I do really, really dislike the look of the speakers because it looks like I messed them up. I dented them. It looks like I pushed them in on accident. Maybe this is because I used to have a microphone that looked just like this and I actually did dent it and I broke it and I was upset because I couldn't use it the rest of my trip. I, you know. I had to go microphone list. So maybe that's just triggering a little bit of PTSD for me, but I, I, I just don't like that sort of crushed look. Now moving into the center, we do have the new Kia infotainment system. So let's talk about it. All right, so let's talk Kia infotainment here in the Seltos. Well, a couple of things to first note. First of all, I love the actual look and design of the infotainment system. This is starting to be more commonplace here in Kia models. The Sorento now gets this design and the Seltos gets it and some of the Stingers get it as well, which is pretty neat. I love this sort of 80s look to it. It's sort of like this purplish, bluish neon, like these are all neon signs, especially the voice memo, which isn't coming across super great on camera, but I promise you in person, it looks nice. So a couple things to note here, first of all, Mainly, I do get Apple CarPlay as well as Android Auto. And this does have wireless CarPlay capability, but they haven't updated it quite yet. So that is coming down the line to get wireless CarPlay. But for now, you still need a wire. Of course, going to Apple CarPlay, here's what it looks like. Very, very basic. However, very high resolution. I think it looks phenomenal, has great refresh rate, and the touch screen is pretty responsive to my finger. That's really all I worry about. I love this display. I think it's very colorful, very unique, and it looks good. We can back out of here and go to the actual Kia. I do have like my Kia map I can also get to as well, and it'll show my music off to the left, which is very nice. Then I do have like voice memos, climate. I can adjust some climate settings in here for auto dehumidify and auto defrost, things like that. You can also scroll over here to UVO, which is basically Kia's roadside assistance, notifications, user manual, valet mode, sounds of nature, which is impressive that this actually gets. So I'll shut up for a second. Wow, it almost sounds as if I'm in a forest. Wow, that's crazy. Crazy how technology is so cool like that. Really needed that. I could do calming sea waves, rainy day, which I will say, 
Kia has changed their sound of a rainy day. It used to sound like someone urinating, but now it actually sounds like a proper rainy day, which is a big improvement. Open air cafe for those COVID times. If you missed being surrounded by people, I certainly don't. Warm fireplace. Very nice. Snowy village. crunching of snow below your feet, and we're back to lively forest. Some Kias get this, not all Kias get the sounds of nature feature. However, I always love checking it out. I can't see it being super practical. However, it is kind of a fun little gimmick. I do also have users up here. So this is obviously Shannon's user, and she said it to be a little tulip or whatever. But I can also change users, set different users, and it'll save some of your favorites, presets, things like that. So if you have multiple drivers of the same vehicle, that would be really helpful. Last but not least, let's put this thing into reverse. And I do get a decent backup camera as well. It shows my map off to the right. Not sure how that's really that important while backing up, but as you can see, as I turn the steering wheel, it adjusts my trajectory, which is usually reserved for nicer vehicles, so a very nice feature there. We do have buttons down below here, physical buttons. Obviously, this is volume, this is tune, and then we have our map, navigation, favorites, seek, track, radio, media, and setup. Then we have two climate control vents and the hazard button, and then we have the climate controls themselves. I wish it had dual zone climate. Again, something that's found on a lot of vehicles at this sort of price point is dual zone climate. However, it's not the end of the world. It is very, very sleek. I love the readout. I think it looks really, really good. Definitely looks modern, and the controls are very easy to see and very easy to use. Then I have a little shelf and I have a 12 volt outlet, USB and a USB specific charger. So the USB in the center just goes into the center infotainment screen while the outside, obviously 12 volt outlet is just for charging whatever. And the USB on the right is strictly for charging. So we'll actually give you more amps. It'll charge your device faster, but it won't go into the radio. So pick your poison. Then we come down to the shifter area itself. Well, first of all, we have a drive mode select. So I have normal, smart, and sport. Normal, obviously, this is going to be for around town use. Don't really care, whatever. Smart is going to learn your driving habits and sort of utilize the vehicle as best as possible. If you drive very aggressively, it's gonna take more traits from the sport mode than the normal mode. But if you drive around town, barely getting into the throttle, it's gonna leave you mostly in normal mode. And then of course we do have sport mode for when you wanna feel like Speed Racer. The shifter itself is out of every other Kia. I'm pretty sure it's shared with the Soul, the Forte, the Rio, the Stinger. It looks the same in all of them. And, but I actually like the feel of it. It has a nice little piece of leather at the top, gives it a nice little premium feel. To the left of it, I do have a heated seat button and two dead switches, unfortunately, still because this is a mid-tier, it is missing some other features. And then on the right, I actually have a center diff lock, which this is not really an off-road vehicle. It's very interesting that it has a center diff lock. This is not found on equivalent vehicles like the RAV4 or like the CX-5 or even the CRV, which also I just realized, shout out to Kia for not making the Seltos a three letter or digit name. Breaking the mold there, I guess. But anyway, not very common for vehicles like this. The center diff lock is to help with traction through like snow or deep mud, which I don't really see happening to this vehicle all that much. Maybe this button will get used once or twice. Then I do have the passenger heated seat button and hill descent control, another off-road feature that I wouldn't really associate with the Seltos. I imagine this car more of an on-road SUV than a hardcore off-roader. Hill descent control is usually found in like Silverados and Jeeps and vehicles of that nature. And I'm not quite sure why it's in here, but I have it at least. So if you're going down a hill and trying to focus on not hitting ruts and trees, uh, you can have some assistance with that. Then we do have two cup holders. So we will do a big freaking bottle test here in the Kia Seltos, and it just barely fails. I feel like if I could get a Dremel into this cup holder, I could make it fit very easily, but alas, I'm not going to cut up Shannon's new car, so it fails the big friggin' bottle test. <laughs> then I do have a little center armrest, nothing crazy there, and then we gotta talk about the seats. The seats are a mix of leather and cloth. I'm not a huge fan of the way that they look. However, they are comfortable and they're heated, but they are not power. So heated, but not power. 
and they're comfortable enough. They do everything I could really ask for from a vehicle like this. But speaking of seats, we do have back seats, so let's go do a back seat review. All right, so we're in the back of the 2022 Kia Seltos Nightfall, and first of all, knee room, great. Headroom, I'm 5'11", perfectly fine, which is great, especially for a more compact SUV. Uh, the space back here is absolutely great. I would not mind riding back here for an extended amount of time, which is sometimes hard to find in vehicles in this segment. So I'm very, very happy with that. I do have a center console here with two cup holders, and I do have my own USB charger down below, as well as two vents and a cubby. I don't get any like climate controls per se, nor do I get heated seats or anything like that, but I really wasn't expecting that out of a vehicle like this. Again, we have the sort of crushed speakers back here. I'm not sure if they're supposed to form a shape or not can't really tell uh but uh you know i have speakers back here which is nice and that's really it it's a comfortable decent back seat you know don't expect limousine quality back here but it is still nice to ride back here and me being a larger adult male i can fit back here pretty pretty normally let's go take a quick look at the trunk and then we'll talk about the looks so around the back of the seltos unfortunately i don't have a trunk popper on the key of course i can unlock it and then i just come up here and there's just a little button now before we fully open it this is the button and then you use this to pull up not a whole lot of real estate to pull up wish i could get a little bit more leverage on it but that's okay now that we are back here i do have this actual kia branded cargo net which is kind of fun probably a little trampoline for their little doggy shout out to otis but other than that pretty sizable space back here i don't have a 12 volt outlet which is something i would have liked to have seen from a vehicle like this but not the end of the world now we got to talk about the looks and i love the nightfall touches here you could really notice the black wheels black grill black accents things like that that is a big perk of the nightfall edition however while talking about the exterior i love this color i do want to talk about the interior again just for a split second because going across the dashboard is a blue accent piece now i don't really mind this i think it actually looks decent in this car adds a little bit of subtle color to the interior fine however my issue comes with the fact that if you don't get a blue kia seltos it's still blue on the inside. So I can't imagine the terrible color combinations that come with that. This just happens to be blue on blue, but if you order a white one, black one, silver one, red one, you're still getting blue on the inside, and I think that starts to look a little tacky. So I guess we lucked out there. But now let's get to my final thoughts here on the Kia Seltos. Well, let's get the negatives out of the way. Well, I'm really not a fan of the speakers. I think they look weird. I wish it had radar cruise control. I feel like at this price point, I deserve radar cruise control. And I think the last downside of this car is the name. Seltos always just reminds me of seltzer water. You know, the bubbly, fizzy water that vaguely tastes like things sometimes. That's just what I think of when I see the name Seltos. So yes, I did praise Kia earlier on in the video for not naming this something with three digits, like CX-5. But the name Seltos is just kind of weird. And I think that that's unfortunate because I really think that this has the potential to be the flagship Kia. I think that if Kia really does their homework and really stretches out this car, I think this could be their top seller. I think this could be their most important and infamous model because I think it does everything you need it to do really, really well. I think it looks really, really nice. I love the blue color. I like the black accents from the Nightfall edition. I think it drives really nice. I like the 1.6 liter turbo. I like the seven speed automatic. I like the interior feel enough. It's definitely not a luxury car, but again, for something that you're gonna just drive every day and go to the grocery store and you don't need it to be a Bentley. It's that good solid middle ground. Does this absolutely excel in any category? Not that it's jumping out at me, but it also doesn't really fail in any category. You know, people always say, I want my life to be like an action movie. I want to be the action star in an action movie. And on paper, that sounds great. But in all reality, you don't want to be an action star. You know how tiring that looks? Have you ever seen Bruce Willis or Chris Hemsworth stop and use the bathroom? That sounds ridiculous. I want my life to be average and normal with just a quick montage of highlights, just special moments. I don't need to live my life on the red line. I want a memorable taste every once in a while. 
and that's what this car is. Alex and Shannon are already starting to make memories with this car, and those are going to be good memories, fun memories. Some would say memorable memories, but they're not going to make memories of it on the side of the road. They're not going to make memories of it in the shop repetitively. They're gonna remember the time they used it to move Shannon into her new apartment. They're gonna remember the times of bringing Otis to the groomer, and that's what's important. Those are the moments that actually matter. This car isn't an action movie. It's an end of credits montage. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Shannon for letting me take out her Kia Seltos. I, I really am impressed with this and it's nice driving something better than the base model that I reviewed almost two years ago at this point. This gives me a better slice of what the Seltos really is and I have to say I'm really, really happy with it. I think you made the right choice, Shannon. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.